It is now the last day of the AC Robotics Robot in 3 Days build, and with less than 9 hours left until the team has to leave to the Alberta Tech Alliance build space, all that was left to do was put everything together with electronics and programming and start testing. The last subsystems to be integrated into the robot were the custom driver station, the pneumatics, and the winch systems. The driver station was put together from arcade buttons and joysticks, a breadboard for all the circuitry, and a key slot for fun as the on-off switch. The microprocessor used was an Arduino Leonardo, which has built-in USB communication so that its outputs can act like a mouse and keyboard when hooked up to a computer. With a custom driver station like this, all movements and automated actions can be mapped to a button or the joysticks. The pneumatics were used to extend the power cell intake on linear sliders. Using pneumatics is one of the most intuitive and simple ways to get this type of motion. After some complications with the tubing and finding a place for all the tanks and the air compressor, the team had the pneumatics running and the power cell intake was ready to roll. The winch system was built from two sim motors and planetary gears to wind up the steel wire to raise and lower the single stage elevator. The axle was made from two rods connected by a shaft coupler. The winch and elevator was the last subsystem to test because the robot was just above the weight requirement and it was possible that if either the winch or the elevator broke during the climb, it could break other parts of the robot too. The robot unfortunately couldn't climb because the shaft coupler connecting the two rods that make up the axle kept disengaging. Nor we don't have, nor do we have enough power to actually. Like we just work. straight up don't have enough power. Oh, it, yeah, and it's, it's like it's power. the gearbox is not. It's, it's not nearly. Big. There's not enough power to feed the motors. The gear ratio is not high enough, I guess. No. With more time and planning, the team could raise the gear ratio for more torque and switch out the connected axles on the winch for a single continuous one so that the axle wouldn't disengage during the lift. It should also be noted that the team tested on a bar that did not tilt. On the game generator switch, the robot may slip and slide along the rung, which could be catastrophic in competition. For example, the team placed the electronics box on the side of the hopper, and if this robot and another robot were to slip and collide on the generator switch, it could compromise the whole functioning of one or both colliding robots, and cost the competition. So grip should be placed on any claws or elevators to prevent any sliding. Overall, the team's robot really came together at the last minute in surprising and satisfying ways. But their advice to teams competing this season would be to have good communication between sub-teams. The ball intake and the conveyor belt hopper may have functioned smoother and with less awkward motions if subteams planned their coordination earlier in the process. And the electronics box could have been made smaller or the electronics could have gone into a different spot with better planning. Test and try to imagine what could be added or taken off of the robot to improve interaction with the game pieces. The team found that a hard stop at the top of the conveyor would stop the power cells from misaligning from the shooting position, and programming coordinated motions together would have made operating the robot much easier. For example, to shoot a ball from this robot, the driver would have to simultaneously run the conveyor but also give time for the flywheel to get up to speed before attempting to shoot. Programming the timing of both mechanisms together into one shooting action at the driver station would make gameplay easier and prevent mistakes in timing during a high-stress competition. A huge thank you to the sponsors and partners, SolidWorks, Scouts Canada for allowing us to use their facility for building, Alberta Tech Alliance for letting us use their build space for filming, and the First Robotics Society in Alberta for their mentorship and assistance. Together, we will rise. Good luck.